Hey everyone, my name is Malte and I'm the director of photography from a movie Eine Geheime Macht. And today I'd like to break down some of my personal favorite shots from a movie from a cinematographer's standpoint. Let's get started. So the first shot I'd like to take a look at is one from the Dunu Council scenes. We had two days to shoot over 90 shots from seven scenes. What we did on location first though was removing all the chairs, since that particular location is usually used for concerts and other sorts of events. This shot right here for example was shot in the afternoon of the first day of shooting. And just as most of the other scenes that did not require the actors to sit down, I shot this one on a shoulder rig with the Sony FS100, which just allowed for more flexibility considering a very very tight schedule for these two days of shooting. Considering the lighting there was not much that had to be done artificially. The sun was setting right behind the camera and just turned the entire ceiling into a giant softbox, giving a nice and soft ambient light on his face. Also the sunlight bounced off of the side of the building opposite, which created that light wrap on the side of his face. Grading wise, there's not really anything special about the shot except from the glow that we added, um, just to make everything seem a little less flat. Similar grading we can also see in this shot from two scenes earlier. Also one technique I started using during editing was adding some digital pans and tilts to the image to make everything just seem a little more dynamic. So with the next shot we basically just had a ton of luck. We were shooting on a spit of land next to a river and there were a few people camping back there, just a few hundred meters away from our location. And for whatever reason, they did not manage to light the fire properly. So there were those fumes of smoke slowly gliding across the river, just creating this really nice and almost magical atmosphere. This was also shot on the Sony FS100 with a 35mm lens and here you can really see the character of the lens with the image and the bokeh just warping as you get closer to the edge of the frame. Since the sun had already partly set in this shot and we were in the shadow of some rock formations, the brighter parts of the sky just casted their lights on our actors which once again made for a beautiful highlight. Now for our next setup we moved down into Flandy Ilo's lair. Na, wenn das nicht meine allerliebste Lieblingsidee ist. Und das bestellte Unkraut hast du auch mitgebracht. As you might or might not know, spoiler alert, Inanna returns to Flandy Lure to rescue her sister but gets captured in the process. So we get to meet Flandy Lure and she's just that crazy person hiding in the vault below her castle. And to express that craziness visually, we went and pretty much just grabbed the ugliest color gel that we could find from my kid and therefore lit the entire location in purple and pink. The one light we had available on the day, I pointed at the ceiling to once again give an ambient light to the entire set. Also, there's that backlight on Flandy Lure's shoulders, and that's from an LED spotlight that literally fits right behind her neck. In fact, if you look closely, you will be able to spot the color gel right at the end of the shot. Since we did all the crazy lighting in camera, there was almost no grading to be done in post. So only thing that had to be done was increasing the contrast and setting the saturation to around about like 120%. The next shot is cold, like really cold. Sie werden sterben, nicht wahr? Nein, sie werden uns nicht defrieren lassen. Oder? The fact that all the actors seem to be freezing so much in this scene is just because they are not acting at all. We picked a very windy location in a watchtower in a nearby castle and on the day of shooting the temperature went down to like minus 10 degrees celsius. The lighting was once again mostly powered by the location itself. By placing our actress in between the two windows we had one side of her face lit by a reflector placed just outside the frame right here and then her left shoulder illuminated by another window right here. Grading wise, I pushed everything towards a bluish tone to make you as the viewer really just feel the cold that our characters experience as well. So there's one more shot to go. And this one is from scene eight, where we get to meet Inanna, our protagonist for the first time. She meets a secret informer and gets to know where she has to go in order to find Faina. 
Hast du etwas? Ich bin mir nicht sicher. Ich werde zerschweigen. Ich kann nur Vermutungen anstellen. If we look at the original footage, everything looks really flat. The magic of this shot truly relies on the grading. Increasing the contrast had Inanna's informant fall into darkness. Since the FS100 has a dynamic range of 10 to 11 stops, Inanna's face unfortunately blew out, which was a necessary evil to keep the details in the shadows and on the face of the informant actress. But adding some glow fortunately decreased the very harsh contrast between Inanna and her informant. One nice detail also is, if she bends forward, there is that little catch light in her eye, which just adds to her mysteriousness. But looking back, adding some haze into the scene or just a little more light on the face of informant actress really would have improved the shot tenfold. On the cinema screen, this was actually perfectly fine, but if you watch this on a normal television screen or even on a mobile device, I'm honestly not really sure if you'll be able to spot Inanna's informant back there hidden in the shadows. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this little cinematography breakdown. If you enjoy this sort of content, please let us know so that we might be able to make more of it. Thank you for watching and see you another time.